Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters. It's also dedicated to everyone who subscribes to my channel. I'm never kidding when I say I'm doing all this for you guys. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, if you buy into this over-commercialized holiday. Personally, I want a second Halloween. A pre-Halloween, as it were. Way more romantic. Today, we're doing a very special build, chosen by votes from my Patreon supporters with a second poll on YouTube to break a tie. In honor of the holiday that uses a heart for its symbol, we did a poll with characters that would probably eat a heart. Vampires. And which vampire was chosen? From Dracula Untold, Prince Vlad Dracula. With the enemy at the gate and his soldiers outnumbered, Vlad discovered the master vampire Caligula. Making a pact with the ancient vampire, Vlad is gifted with the powers of darkness for three days. Should Vlad taste the blood of a human before the sunrise on the final day, Caligula will be released and Vlad will become an eternal monster. With the power now at his call, Vlad destroyed his enemies, but on the final day his wife was murdered and his son was taken. Vlad damned his soul to claim revenge, becoming Dracula, Prince of Darkness, Son of the Devil. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. We're using Standard Point Array to make things easy for you, and we are multi-classing. And damn, this will be a difficult one, as we have three stat minimums. So pay attention to those stats should you use a different system. We'll start things off with Dex at 15. Your speed and agility are amazing as you take down multiple opponents in the blink of an eye. Charisma will follow at 14. You're the most loved ruler of your land and you are completely terrifying. Wisdom comes in at a 13. Your senses are tuned beyond what your former self ever had. Con will be a 12. Low for you because immortality has advantages. Strength will be low at a 10 and we're we're going to have to dump intelligence. You're actually really intelligent and a brilliant tactician, but we have a dump stat and for some odd reason, you didn't think your family would be a target. Vlad was a human, but Dracula is a vampire, which means we're going with Damp Fear from Van Richten's. Place plus two into Charisma and plus one into Dex. Your base speed is 35 feet and you have Ancestral Legacy. This grants you two skills of your former life. Take Perception and Survival. Dark Vision grants you eyes that can see in darkness as if it were dim light out to 60 feet and in dim light as if it were bright light. Deathless Nature means you no longer need to breathe. Spider Climb gives you a climbing speed equal to your walking speed. Vampiric Bite gives you fangs that count as simple melee weapons for you. You can use your con instead of strength for attack and damage rolls, and you have advantage on the attack rolls if you're missing half or more of your total health, and it will be 1d4 piercing damage. If you use your fangs on a creature that isn't undead or a construct, you can empower the bite to have one of two effects. You regain HP equal to the bite damage, or you gain a bonus to your next skill check equal to the bite damage. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. For background, take the skills Intimidation and Persuasion. Before you got your powers, you were an amazing soldier, so let's start with combat capabilities. Level 1 Rangers start things off with three skills. Grab Athletics, Animal Handling, and Stealth. Favored Foe allows you to mark an enemy as your favored foe. After you hit a creature with an attack, you mark them for one minute while you maintain this. And now you will deal bonus damage equal to an extra 1d4. You can use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. Deft Explorer grants you several features as you level up. Starting with Canny, choosing a skill you are proficient with, you can now double the proficiency bonus. Choose Perception. Time to make a deal. Level 1 Warlocks start with an otherworldly patron. Undead found in Van Richten's sums up Caligula. Form of Dread transforms you into a darker self. With a bonus action, you transform for one minute. When you transform, you gain temporary hit points equal to 1d10 plus your Warlock level. You are immune to the Frightened condition, and once per turn when you hit a creature with an attack, you can force a Wisdom save. Should they fail, they are now frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Packed Magic makes you a full 
level spellcaster. You have limited spell slots, but have your spell slots maxed out to the highest level you can have. You start off with two cantrips and two spells. Four spells, Booming Blade enhance your sword attacks. When you hit with a weapon against a creature within five feet of you, the attack deals the normal damage, and then the force of the attack stays within them until the start of your next turn. If the target moves five feet willingly before the start of your next turn, they receive an additional 1d8 thunder damage. Thunderclap lets you strike the ground with such force that you cause every creature within five feet of you to make a con save. Should they fail, they receive 1d6 thunder damage. Cause fear calls forth the dread within someone's heart that is within 60 feet of you, forcing a wisdom save. Should they fail, they become frightened of you for one minute while you maintain the spell. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. Charm Person hypnotizes one humanoid up to 30 feet away, forcing a wisdom save. Should they fail, they are now charmed by you and see you as a friend for one hour. This spell will end if you or your allies attack them or attack their allies. When the spell ends, they will know you hypnotize them. Level 2 Warlocks gain Eldritch Invocations. These are special gifts you receive from your patron. You receive two at this level for these invocations. Armor of Shadows gives you mage armor and allows you to cast it without a spell slot or material components. This gives you an AC of 13 plus dex for eight hours when not wearing armor. Devil's Sight lets you see in darkness and magical darkness out to a distance of 120 feet. For your new spell, False Life grants you temporary hit points equal to 1d4 plus four for one hour. Your character level 3 now, Spider Climb, is upgraded. You can now move up, down, or across vertical surfaces and upside down along ceilings, leaving your hands free. Level 3 Warlocks receive a Pact Boon. Now even though you didn't receive a Magical Sword, you're getting one because it fits with the build, and none of the other Pact Boons really fit. Pact of the Blade lets you create a magical weapon as an action. You are proficient with the weapon, and it can be any melee weapon you wish. I'm gonna go a little historical with this and suggest a Killage, which was a saber that the real Vlad wielded, which is scimitar-like. You can also bond with a magic weapon with a one-hour ritual. You also receive second level spells spell slots, meaning all your first level spells are now upgraded. For your new spell, Suggestion is a stronger hypnosis. Now targeting a creature within 30 feet, you can issue a command that is up to two sentences long that sounds reasonable to the target, so no stab yourself stuff. The creature must make a wisdom save or must now obey the command to the best of their abilities. You must maintain the spell for up to eight hours or until the command is fulfilled. Level 4 Warlocks earn our first ability score improvement and it's time to grab a feat. Fey Touch, found in Tasha's, adds plus 1 to Wisdom and grants you 2 spells that you can cast without spell slots once per long rest or with spell slots whenever you feel like it. For those spells, Gift of Alacrity enhances your reflexes and allows you to add 1d8 to your initiative rolls for 8 hours. Misty Step allows you to move as a swarm of bats, teleporting up to 30 feet with a bonus action. For your new spell and cantrip, take what you want. Your character level 5 now, Thunderclap now does 2d6 thunder damage, and Booming Blade now does an extra 1d8 thunder damage on the hit, and will now do 2d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 2 Rangers gain a fighting style. Blind fighting gives you blindsight out to 10 feet. Within this range, you can see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if it's invisible unless it can actually hide from you. You also gain spell casting, which makes you a real spellcaster. Normally, this means you would have to figure out how many spell slots you have because you're multi-classing spellcasters, but warlocks aren't real spellcasters. So you get your ranger slots and your warlock slots. Now remember, your ranger spells with DCs will be wisdom-based, while the warlock will always be charisma-based. You start off with two spells. For those spells, Cure Wounds heals you 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier. Fog Cloud creates a 20-foot radius sphere of fog within 120 feet of you, making the area heavily obscured. This spell lasts for one hour and must be maintained. Level 3 Rangers now have their subclass, and you know we're going to have to amp up the bats. Swarm Keeper, found in Tasha's, grants you Gathered Swarm. This creates a swarm of tiny bats to fight with you. Immediately after you attack, you can cause the swarm to do one of three things. They can damage the creature you attack, causing 1d6 piercing damage, push the target 5 feet in any direction, or force a strength saving throw using your wisdom for the DC, and you push the target up to 15 feet in any 
direction should they fail. You're not going to be able to create a giant monstrous wave of destruction with this, but it's the best we're going to do. Swarmkeeper magic grants you new spells at certain levels that you always have prepared. For these spells, Mage Hand sends out a small swarm of bats out to 30 feet for one minute that can carry or manipulate objects that weigh no more than 10 pounds. These bats can carry the object to you or even open doors and more. Fairy Fire creates a cloud of bats that swarm into a 20 foot cube and magically illuminate the area. Any creature within the cube must make a deck save or begin to glow. Any attack roll against a glowing creature has advantage and it can't benefit from being invisible. You must maintain this spell for one minute. Primal Awareness lets you speak to the children of the night, granting you new spells at certain levels that you always have prepared. For this level spell, Speak with Animals allows you to actually speak with the beast for 10 minutes. This does not make the beast intelligent, and you can just understand them. For your normal ranger spell, Long Strider adds 10 feet to your total movement for one hour. Level 4 rangers earn another ability score improvement, Amp Up Dex. Level 5 Rangers receive extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. You also receive second level spells. For a Primal Awareness spell, Beast Sense allows you to see and hear through the senses of a willing beast you touch for one hour while maintaining the spell. For your Swarm Keeper spell, Web creates a swarm to hold creatures, creating a 20 foot cube out to 60 feet from you. This cube is lightly obscuring the area and is difficult terrain. Each creature that starts its turn within the cube must make a deck save restraining them should they fail. Once restrained, the creature must make a strength check against your ranger spell DC using their action to free themselves. Fire can destroy this cube, but will deal 2d4 fire damage to any creature inside as it's being destroyed. This cube lasts for one hour while you maintain the spell. For your normal spell, Pass Without a Trace cloaks you in shadows for one hour while you maintain the spell, adding plus 10 to any stealth check for you and any creature you choose within 30 feet of you. You also leave no trace of your move. Movements. Level 5 Warlocks have a new invocation. For this invocation, Improved Pack adds plus 1 to your packed weapon's attack and damage and turns your pack weapon into your spellcasting focus for your Warlock spells. You also now have 3rd level spell slots. For your new spell, Fly allows you to fly for up to 10 minutes while you maintain the spell. While active, you have a flying speed of 60 feet. Level 6 Undead Warlocks gain Grave Touch. You no longer require food or drink to survive. Also, when you hit a creature once per turn, you can change the damage to Necrotic. While using your Form of Dread, you can roll one more additional damage dice to determine the Necrotic damage. For your new spell, Vampiric Touch grants you Claws for one minute while you maintain this spell. You can now make a melee spell attack dealing 3d6 Necrotic damage on a hit and you regain HP equal to half half the damage. Until the spell ends, you can make a melee spell attack each turn. Your character level 11 now. Thunderclap does 3d6 thunder damage, and Booming Blade now does an extra 2d8 thunder damage on a hit, and will now do 3d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 7 Warlocks receive our final invocation. For your invocation, Eldritch Mind gives you advantage on concentration to maintain a spell. You also receive 4th level spells. For your new spell, Spirit Shroud unleashes your true dark nature. For 1 minute, while you maintain this spell, you can now deal 1d8 necrotic damage with each attack you make. In addition, any creature of your choice that starts its turn within 10 feet of you has its speed reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. Level 6 Rangers gain a new feature from Deft Explorer, Roving. Your total speed is increased to 40 feet, and you gain a swimming speed equal to your walking speed. Favored Foe now deals 1d6 extra damage. Level 7 Swarm Keeper Rangers now have Writhing Tide. Now you become part of your swarm of bats. With a bonus action, you gain a flying speed of 10 feet and can hover for one minute. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. For your new spell, Jump triples your jump distance for one minute. 
Level 8 Rangers earn another ability score improvement. Cap off decks. Land Stride improves your movement in a way that I've never actually seen in a game. Seriously, I've never seen any Ranger need this, but I don't do a lot of natural environment campaigns. Now, non-magical difficult terrain costs no extra movement, and you can also pass through non-magical plants without being slowed down or take any damage. In addition, you have advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated to slow down your movement. Level 9 Rangers receive 3rd level spells. For your Primal Awareness spell, Speak with Plants lets you speak with plants for 10 minutes. Yeah, pretty simple. You imbue plants within 30 feet of you with a little sentience and animation, and you can now talk to them. You can also turn difficult terrain caused by plants to become ordinary terrain while the spell is active, or you can turn ordinary terrain into difficult terrain. You can even have them move just slightly, but not uproot themselves. For your Swarm Keeper spell, Gaseous Form lets you turn into a cloud for one hour while you maintain this spell. While in this form, you can only fly at a speed of 10 feet, can enter occupied spaces, have resistances to non-magical damage, can pass through small openings, and have advantage on strength decks and con saves. You also can't talk, manipulate objects, attack, or cast spells. For your new spell, Conjure Animal summons the Children of the Night to fight for you. For one hour, while you maintain this spell, you can summon several face spirits in the form of beasts. With this spell, you are now allowed to summon eight wolves or two dire wolves. Level 10 Rangers gain their final feature from Deft Explorer, Tireless. As an action, you can now give yourself temporary HP to 1d8 plus your wisdom. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. In addition, you can now reduce your exhaustion levels by one with a short rest. Nature's Veil allows you to turn invisible with a bonus action until the start of your next turn. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. Your character level 17 now. Thunderclap now does 4d6 thunder damage, and Booming Blade now does 3d8 thunder damage on the hit, and will do an extra 4d8 thunder damage if the target willingly moves. Level 11 Swarm Keeper Rangers now have Mighty Swarm. Your bats now do 1d8 damage. When the bats push someone who has failed their strength saving throw, they are now knocked prone. And when you are moved by the swarm, you gain half cover until the start of your next turn. For your new spell, Zephyr Strike increases your speed again as you merge into your swarm for one minute while you maintain the spell. While active, your movement doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity, and once before the spell ends, you can give yourself advantage on one weapon attack on that turn. If you hit, this attack deals an extra 1d8 force damage and your speed is increased by 30 feet until the end of your turn regardless of if you hit or miss. Level 12 Rangers earn our final ability score improvement. Place this into Wisdom. Our final level is level 13 rangers, and you now have 4th level spells. For your primal awareness spell, locate creature allows you to know the location of a creature that you can name or are familiar with for one hour while you maintain the spell. You sense this creature as long as they are within 1000 feet of you. For your swarm keeper spell, arcane eye allows you to spy on creatures. Creating an invisible bat out to 30 feet, you can see through this bat for one hour while you maintain the spell. As an action, you can move it 30 feet in any direction and there is no limit to how far it can go. It can pass through an opening as small as one inch in diameter, but it can't leave the plane of existence you are on. For your final spell, take what you like. Have fun with this. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 10, Dex 20, Con 12, Intelligence 8, Wisdom 16, Charisma 16. Your total levels are Warlock 7, Ranger 13. Let's dive in. So what do we have with this build? Firstly, your attacks are magical and you can attack multiple people. You can add necrotic damage to this for one minute for a total of 1d6 plus 5 plus 1d8 of damage for each attack. You are capable of moving incredibly fast as well. Base speed 40 can add 10 feet, another 30 feet for a total of 80 feet. You can also fly up to 60 feet for 10 minutes, can teleport 30 feet, can move so fast you can't have opportunity attacks against you, and become 
mist, which you didn't get in this movie, but hey, it's a Dracula power everywhere else. Finally, your bats are incredibly useful. They can deal damage, push targets, knock them down, spy for you, lift you, obscure you, move objects, and help you gain advantage on attacks. I should also mention that you can summon wolves to fight with you, which is pretty cool. Downside. Oh boy, is there some downsides. Firstly, you suffer the spellcaster's curse, concentration spells. You are loaded with them, as in most of your spells must be maintained, and you can only use one of those at a time. You also have two spellcasting modifiers, which has caused us to try and divide between the two so not to favor one over the other, but this means they're both so-so and not great. This can be fixed by either rolling for stats and getting better numbers at the start, or just figuring out which side of things you want to do. Dang. Finally, your intelligence is bad, just bad. Overall, you're pretty vicious. Rush into the fray and slaughter your foes, and then move on before they even realize what is happening. Thank you all for joining me today, and happy this should be pre-Halloween day or chocolate is on sale eve, whichever you prefer. I release a new character build each week on YouTube and Spotify, so make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build, and don't forget to check out my Patreon.